morning, good morning, good morning. Praise God and welcome to Empowering Word Christian Center. Happy Saturday on this Saturday, October 5th, 2024. The only Saturday, October 5th, 2024 that we'll ever receive. So we praise God for it. I'm Pastor Alvin White. Senior Pastor of Empowering Word Christian Center and Transition Prophet. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for joining us during day six of our seven days of prayer and fasting. It is day six. It seems like just yesterday we started day one. And um, praise God, we pray and hope that it has been a wonderful uh experience, a wonderful time, a wonderful time of just prayer, worshiping the Lord, getting closer uh, in his presence and spending time meditating on the word of God. Uh, we just pray and hope that it has been that for you. Praise God. <laughs> it is uh 637 I have the time 637 on a Saturday morning so if you're live praise God welcome 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 praise God if you're watching this later on praise God for you hallelujah thank you many of you may have worked last night or working right now or or you've had a long week and praise God whenever you're watching this thank you for watching this thank you for uh, loving and sharing this send us out we love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you. I'm looking forward to tomorrow, Family Sunday at Empowering Word Christian Center. After you've had a long week like this, of uh, just prayer and fasting and just really being with the people of God all week long, I'm looking forward to spending time with the people of God, seeing them face to face and shaking their hands, hugging them. I'm just looking forward to being in the presence of the people of God and being in the presence of God and being able to praise God. And I'm looking forward to Communion Sunday tomorrow. Bring somebody to the house of God. Bring your family. Bring your friends. Remember, one of the things that we need to be as people of God, especially in this time and in this day, is soul winners. We have to compel them to come to the cross. We have to compel them to come to Jesus. Because the time is short. The time is short. No one knows the day or the hour, but one thing that God did, and we praise God, is he gave us his word and he gave us his prophetic agenda, which is in his word. And that's what Pastor Latoy and I have been preaching and teaching for well over a year now about a year and a half now, going on two years now, we've been preaching this prophetic agenda called the Antichrist Agenda, and it really houses God's end-time prophetic agenda, and you can go on YouTube, and you can binge watch it and listen to it. We just completed the segment called Project 2025, the framework for the Beast Empire World Government. We break down the book of Daniel, we break down the book of Revelation, and we're breaking down all the other prophetic scripture when it comes to the last days, the end times. We break all of that down for you. We go through it word by word, scripture by scripture, so that you can see it. And there's so much symbolism and things of that in there, and we help you with that understanding. And then we match that up to what we've seen historically, what we see present day. It's really, really powerful stuff. And we thank God that he's given us an anointing to be able to do that. Our church operates in the prophetic. We operate in the prophetic. You can see that um, since I'm just going to go with 2020. But even before that, I was prophesying that a racial reckoning was coming to America. That was in 2019. I even preached a series about it. Um, that happened in 2020. I pre, uh, prophesied in 2019 that uh, people would be dying and falling out dead in 2020. That happened. We, what happened? We had the um, COVID-19 virus happen in 2020. But just 2020 since on, 
I prophesied several, I mean possibly hundreds of prophetic words. Uh, we know it's over a hundred prophetic words, um, and we've seen them come true in the news. Um, everything from wars to earthquakes to, um, unfortunately, school shootings and mass casualty events to uh, political, uh, uh, geopolitical regime changes and things of that nature um, to natural disasters and storms. Prophesy that this would be the year of the twister. We would uh, see records and, and, and when it comes to tornadoes, we saw that. And um, so we just continue to see God's word manifested. Our theme for this, for this um, fast is Jeremiah 33, verse 3. And he says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. The key right there is we don't know it. We have to, we have to humble ourselves and realize, Lord, we don't know. We don't know the beginning from the end. You do because you are the beginning and the end. You are the Alpha and the Omega. We don't know the beginning from the end, but we know you so we can tap into you to be able to see the beginning from the end of what you will reveal to us. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He wants to do that. He wants to show us great and mighty, the almighty, the El Shaddai, supernatural things. Why? So that we would continue to walk in his word, continue to walk in faith and, 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 and continue to do the things he's called us to do as his kingdom people. So we do these fasts four times a year. Four is the number of transition and light. We have a new year fast of which we will do in January. Seven days. Seven days is the prophetic number, obviously, of perfection. And, and so we do seven days and we do that four times. We do a Holy Week fast during Holy Week, obviously. And then we do a summer fast in July. July is the beginning of the second half of the year. So our fast in January and July coincide with each other because January is the first six months of the year. July is the last six months of the year. So we do two fasts right at the beginning and the half mark of the year. And then the Holy Week fast is during a very spiritual time and season in the earth. And then the new season fast is also a very spiritual time um, during the uh, during the earth because you have Jewish holidays called Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur during this time period. We're celebrating Rosh Hashanah even right now. Israel is celebrating Rosh Hashanah, the the new year. In fact, when you study that out, many believe that this is the time frame that God created the earth, the, the Garden of Eden. Very, very powerful stuff that we just praise God. We know that it was around this time that Jesus actually um, was born. He was not born on December 25th. Um, of course, you know that, but we believe based on historical records, we believe that this is the time that Jesus was born, around this very time right now. So, very, very powerful stuff, and uh, we praise God for that. Father, we just worship you. We just praise you. We just thank you. Thank you for this brand new day. Thank you for your love and your grace. Your love and your grace. 
your love and your grace. Ooh. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. If you are grateful for God's love and grace, I want you to type that in the chat. Thank you, Lord, for your love and grace. I want you to type that in the chat. Thank you, Lord, for your love and grace. Thank you, Lord, for your love and grace. When you thank God for his love and grace, remember it's that love that casts out all fear. It's that perfect love. It's that love that, you know, is unfailing love, unconditional love, which leads to his grace, the grace of God. Where would we be without the grace of God? Where would, there's no, there's no reason to live without the grace of God. You have nothing. Thank you, Lord, for your love and grace. Father, right now, everybody at the sound of my voice, I pray that they would be overwhelmed with your love and grace. I pray that they would feel your love and grace. I pray that they would just sense your love and grace. I pray that they would see your love and grace. I pray, Lord God, that their home would be just covered with your love and grace. Wherever they go, your love and grace, your love and grace manifested. This unfailing love, this love that is perfect, this love that casts out all fear, the grace Lord God, that's this unmerited favor, Lord God, your grace that washes us and cleanses us, your grace that forgives, your grace that forgets, your grace that makes us brand new, your grace that, that kicks in and, and makes sure that everything is okay. Father, we bless you and praise you for this brand new day. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Lord God, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for breathing the breath of life into us. Thank you for opening our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our hearts ready to receive. Thank you, Lord God. We declare Jeremiah 33. We call to you, Lord God, and we thank you that you will answer and you have answered. And we thank you that you continue to show us great and mighty things. You are the El Shaddai. You are the Almighty. You are great and mighty. You are yourself are great and mighty, supernatural, powerful. Lord God, in every situation of our life, supernatural and powerful in our health and our body, health and healing, supernatural and powerful in our mind, our soul, Lord God, transforming us day by day, supernatural and powerful in our marriages, supernatural and powerful, Lord God, in our finances and our business and on the job, supernatural and powerful with our relationship with our children, supernatural and powerful, Lord God, with our relationship with our loved ones, supernatural and powerful with making decisions and going in the right direction and, 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 and making the right choices, supernatural and powerful, revealing yourself in your word. When we open your word, we read your word, we can see who you are, supernatural and powerful, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, for taking care of the things that uh, uh, have occurred in the past and, and, and bringing resolution to those things, helping us, Lord God, supernatural and powerful, that we don't have to fear the future because you are already there, supernatural and powerful that you have already gone before us, supernatural and powerful that you are already into today, you are already into tomorrow, you are already into next week. Supernatural and powerful, Lord God, of your prophetic agenda, showing us, Lord God, allowing us to see you, Lord God, helping us in our hearts. Your word says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And if we can see you, we can see what you're doing. Supernatural and powerful. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for helping our marriages. Thank you for helping our families. Thank you for helping our children and our children's children. Thank you for helping us in our souls. Helping us in our finances. Thank you for help. Thank you for help. 
Glory to God. I want to go to Joshua. This is what God told Joshua. Now, we have to read this in the context of God speaking to Joshua at that time. But we can extrapolate truth from it. What am I talking about? He says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Well, for us as new covenant children of God, we're not following necessarily the book of the law. We are following the new covenant, which is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and 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 love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We are following the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, who fulfilled the law. So, what we would say then is His word, His word, His word shall not depart from our mouth. His truth shall not depart from our mouth, but we shall meditate in it day and night that we may observe to do according to all that is written. So again, you know, Joshua having to do the law, we having to walk in God's love and his word. We having to walk in this new covenant, this finished work of Christ, this finished work of Christ. And that's loving him with everything that we have and then loving our neighbor as ourselves. That's it. We, we can't duplicate what Joshua was told to do because we don't follow what Joshua follows. We follow the one who fulfilled the law. We love the one who fulfilled the law. And as if we do those two commandments, we get to hang everything on that. Hallelujah. You see how that works? So now that we do that, we observe, because if we love God, we're not going to walk in... Um, you know, we're not going to uh, do those things that are contrary to his word. If we love God, then we're not going to go out lying, go out committing adultery and fornication. We're not going to go out uh, bearing false witness. We're not going to go out uh, walking into, you know, leading people in deception and things of that nature. If we love him, see, and he says, the key there in this scripture is that you should meditate on it. Meditate on it. And for then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. In other words, what's going to happen is, is as you are walking in God's love and loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself, then your faith out of that will cause you to make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. You'll be walking in faith. The just shall live by faith. Faith working through love. Hallelujah. And then it says, have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage and do not be afraid nor dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We can definitely take that. Have I not um, commanded you to be strong that's just like Ephesians 6. Be strong in the Lord and the power is mine. Heaven I commanded you be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor disillusion in your mind. That's what dismayed means. Don't be disillusioned. So why am I talking about that? Well, we can go on over to Philippians. says this, Philippians chapter 4, and he says it in verse 8, he says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, woo, whatever things are noble, 
Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So this is this is this is coinciding with. Joshua 1, you know, 9 here, um, 8, 9, and, and, and just meditating. So how do we do that? So what we do is we just spend time just visualizing God's word working as he said it. We visualize God speaking his word and us speaking his word and us walking in his word. We visualize God's love for us. We visualize, you know, um, we, we, you can look at things in the past and they can be very, very tough, very tragic, very hurtful. But then if you put on the lens of God's goodness, you can then see it. Um, in a different perspective. You know, you can see it in a different perspective. And what I'm saying is, is you can, if you can see God in your past, in your worst situation, you'll be able to, you'll be able to see God in the future. So now I'm, when I think about the past, I think I start meditating. I'm, I start meditating. I start seeing, oh my gosh, gosh, God was there. God was right there. He was doing that. He was taking care of this and he was there. And, and, and the enemy wanted to take me out. The enemy wanted to steal, kill and destroy. And he couldn't. And I'm still here. And God, God was there and I'm still here, which means God's got me in the future. See, you start meditating on the fact that God's going to take care of you financially and you start meditating that every bill is paid and every day you start meditating that money's coming. You start meditating that, you know what? God has got this. He's got this taken care of because he was able to feed over 20,000 people and he can supernaturally, he can give me the wisdom and he can give me discernment. He can give me direction. You start meditating on health and healing that whatever the doctor said, you, you just start meditating. Oh, I see that thing even healed right now. You just start meditating on by stripes I'm healed. You start meditating on the cross. He took those and you start meditating. You start form, you start, oh, glory be to God. And what happens is, is faith starts to arise because now you are changing, you're changing your mind and you're changing your heart on that. And faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What is that process? You got information, that's God's word, and then you have visualization you see it and then you have meditation you meditate and when you meditate that allows the word to get from your it goes from knowledge to revelation that's the next thing now now you know beyond a shadow of doubt it doesn't matter what anybody says you got revelation you have it and that's where faith why is this important? Because during fasting and prayer, you want to find those areas where you are struggling in your faith. You want to find those areas where you are struggling in your faith and say, okay, Lord, I need to get some word. I need to start visualizing your word working and operating. And then I need to meditate on that. I need to speak it. I need to go around every day and just, Lord, I thank you that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. Let's say somebody is dealing with high blood pressure, hypertension. Lord, I thank you that now I'm fully convinced that on the cross, you saw me and you saw that my body would be dealing with high blood pressure. And that's why you went to the cross. You said, I'm going to take care of this right here. 
all. And you just you just do that. You just you drive and Lord God, I thank you that and let's say you take a medicine for it. Lord, I thank you that the medicine is working and it has no ill side effects. And I thank you, Lord God, that healing is taken over to where the medicine, I don't even have to take the medicine anymore. Lord God, I'm so confident that when I go and check my body blood pressure, it's just because now my soul receives your love. My soul says that all is well in my body, and now my body has to follow suit. Oh, Lord, I thank you that I can eat, and you give me directions to eat the right things, and my body's blood pressure is perfect. Lord, I thank you. I just saw a commercial about high blood pressure. I thank you that that's not me anymore. That's not, you, you see, now you're, you just, now that thing, you just, you just receive, and you just keep on doing that. You just keep on doing that. You just keep on doing that, and then you will see the manifestation, see? And you can do that, really, with anything. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just speak the word only. Speak the word only. Glory to God. And you thank the Lord. You just thank the Lord. You just, Lord, I believe I receive. I thank you. And you don't look at, well, I'm not there yet. You just look at, it's already been done. And I'm just receiving. No matter what the situation, I believe I receive. I'm not going to speak anything contrary to the word of God. That is you reminding yourself of God's love and grace on your life. Well, I'm excited about tomorrow. Um, would you continue to keep Hurricane Helene? victims in the area. Uh, I mean, it's killed. Now the number is 215 people. Just, we, if you look at before and after picture, this is total devastation. We have to go to that prophetic word that I had just given just weeks ago where I said that I saw a wave of water and it just took out. It was just devastation. I believe that prophetic word was that for that, for that right there. Based on what we're seeing, it just took out. We have to go back to that prophetic word. And um, we just have to keep praying for these people. Well, I love you. My wife and I, we love you. God loves you. His love and grace, he's for you, not against you. He, he's thinking about you. Good thoughts. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. And I want you to keep on praying and fasting today. <laughs> Don't get weary on the last day or the last full day because we're continuing tomorrow and then after service it's going to end. Um, we're going to have communion Sunday. Bring someone to the house of God. It's going to be a great time. We love you with the love of Father, thank you for your people. And thank you for helping us. Thank you for helping us with the, your words says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And this is that mind renewal process of meditating on the word of God and saying, okay, what does the word of God have to say about my situation? And I'm just going to allow it. I'm going to visualize it. I'm going to now say it. I'm not I'm, I'm going to speak it. I'm not going to say anything contrary. And I'm just going to meditate on it. I'm just going to believe and receive. Thank you for helping us with that process so that we can see the manifestation of your word. We love you. We love you. We love you. Father, some people have been hurt. Yes. Some people have hurt hurts from relationships. Oh, yeah. 
right now, I see the Lord. He wants to heal and deliver you of the pain of broken relationships, divorces. Maybe you weren't married, but you 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 basically were and could have been, and and and, and it didn't work out. Or um, children. Father, I thank you for healing and deliverance. Brothers and sisters, siblings, healing right now in the name of Jesus. Healing and deliverance right now. Lord God, best friends, you were best friends and healing and deliverance right now. Healing in the soul.